Thank you so much for joining me on a care collab of this gorgeous, gorgeous, as the name says, beauty. This is Kathleen Cezagarik Wax African Beauty, to be precise. And today I am joined by Trisha's Orchids and Plant Life, Tropical Plants Finland, and Ed's Orchids. Seeing as we're all growing a Zagarig wax and mine happens to be in bloom, I am so grateful that the channels have been so kind as to take up their time, change their schedules, film, etc., so that we can post a care collab while mine is in bloom. So let's not waste too much time and get in a little bit closer. Check out those blooms. First of all, I want to say that the color isn't exactly what I'm seeing in real life. They look a little bit more faded, but on a sunny day, it would look even worse. So I'm getting it as close as possible. But if you think of a blackberry, beautiful, ripe, juicy blackberry, that's the color of the petals and sepals. And then if you think of a dragon fruit, the pink of the dragon fruit, that is what is going on with the lip. So blackberry with the pink scarlet of the dragon fruit. Those are the perfect colors, if you can imagine them, of these blooms. I wanted to try something else despite being an overcast day to see if I can get the bloom color a little bit more closer by putting a bit of shade on them. So let's have a look how that changes. Nope, it doesn't do anything. Blackberries and dragon fruit it is, if you can imagine that. If you can now imagine a gorgeous port wine, that is the fragrance. There's a hint of sweetness. There's a certain depth about it. It hits your nose. It is an obvious fragrance. Right now in my blooming alley, I can really tell that Zagari Wax African Beauty is in bloom. And she has been in bloom now for two days. So I'm getting them as fresh as I can. Being that it is August, being that it is the hottest month of the year, I wanted these blooms to look as pristine as possible, also without any dust on them whatsoever. They are extremely sturdy blooms, very waxy. So the shine that you see, that is actual like wax. Very, very sturdy. There's nothing flimsy about these blooms. And the whole cattleya is actually a bifoliate, or maybe not. The fact that I have these blooms, I am very, very happy. I was not expecting blooms on this growth this time around because last year she had a massive, massive division taken off of her. So there's like half of the orchid there and she is pretty much needing to reset, grow new roots and everything. And you see the size of the growth that she's blooming on is half the size of the previous year's growth. The previous year's growth gave me nine blooms. Can you believe it? I have eight on this little growth here that also only has one leaf. I am very, very glad that this orchid is so forgiving. So if you're considering getting a Sagarig wax or you're not sure whether you should divide her and then forfeit the blooms for another year, trust me, don't worry about it. Divide her, send the division on, make someone happy. She will bloom for you anyway. And what a gorgeous, gorgeous spectacle this is. It's gonna last probably about three weeks if we can maintain somewhat reasonable temperatures, protecting the orchid a little bit in the shade, no direct sun, which a bifoliate doesn't appreciate anyway, but that is how you can extend the longevity of some of the blooms, especially when they're so waxy, because there's a lot of moisture in blooms like these that can easily cook and get frazzled. So a little bit of shade, protected and the blooms should last about three weeks and she exudes her perfume during the day which is just like I said it's a beautiful beautiful rich port wine with a hint of sweetness about it. I normally consider my bifolias to be divas when it comes to repotting or dividing I would rather divide when the roots are growing. So if for example I was at a point of wanting to divide this orchid now would be the time and I could easily take her out of the pot, clean her up, pot her up and then we have a great climate in the pot for new roots and no stalling. If it's an emergency repot then I would definitely try to match as close as possible what she came with 
As you can see, I grow in self-watering with LECA, but you can always tweak how much moisture and how much aeration is in the pot if you have to make an emergency repot and you want to get your Zagarig wax into inorganic media. It doesn't have to be LECA, it can be lava rock. I would be very cautious with lava rock, however, because this orchid has a very, very vigorous root system. It has already gone and grown out and under through the pot. It's coming through the holes underneath. So if you're going into lava rock, bear in mind that the pot would be large enough to keep the orchid in for a considerable amount of time because any repot is extremely damaging to the roots. There is something to be said about being able to lift an orchid out and then put her into a bigger pot and fill with media around it. But bifoliates by their nature have an attribute of dumping their roots. So an occasional cleanup is absolutely necessary even with inert media. I always recommend two years, three years maximum for an orchid that is in inert media to actually get a cleanup. Otherwise, the climate of the pot changes, the oxygen exchange changes, and it all becomes a bit crowded. The roots grow into all the nooks and crannies, locking out any kind of oxygen and airflow that you might be giving it when you flush an orchid. So I would say the maximum is three years. And seeing as this orchid only just got divided last year, you can see that the size of the pot, you wouldn't think necessarily it makes sense because of the size of the division. In this case, it is gonna be absolutely fine for two years, but the size of the roots also determine what size of the pot it is, not just how big is the rhizome. If I were to take a smaller pot, I would be choking out the oxygen in the pot much faster, and then I would need to repot within one year because of the size of the roots. So I always take that into consideration as well when it comes to potting up. What is my pot going to look like in one year? Can it hold out for two years? Preferably three. In this case, I would say two years. If I don't get around to it, I will get away with it for three years. You can see that I have a support in the pot as well, right here. And it's holding on to the orchid, even though now I don't need it because clearly nothing is supporting this orchid anymore. It's standing bolt upright all of its own. I do a specific light training. I will put a card up in the video if you want to have a look at that so that the orchid stays in her pot. The other thing that is also clear to see, this growth that is blooming with such massive blooms, and trust me, this is not a puny spike. There is substance to this spike. And yet the growth is supporting itself. I have an MSU fertilizer and she gets, every time her reservoir is empty, she gets 300 parts per million during her blooming and growing phase. That includes the roots. So even when these blooms are fading, you can see the root action is starting now. The new root system is being developed and all that needs to be sustained with a good fertilizer. And because she's such a big orchid with such strong structures having to carry quite a load, 300 parts per million every single time that reservoir is empty. But I do flush a lot as well. So during the summer, obviously now, she's really, really absorbing all those nutrients and all that moisture. So it's probably once a week now that I'm flushing her through using my mask of the pot twice with plain RO water before I fill up the reservoir again. And then in the winter, when it's cooler, she normally is not resting. I don't like to use that word too much because they're always doing something, but she's not growing a new growth until about February. February, March is when her new growth starts. And then that is where I will start with fertilizer again, straight away with 300 parts per million. I don't start to bump it up slowly because when she starts growing, all that energy needs to be in the stem right here in order to support this. And believe me, last year, as you can see, it was double. So the spike went up here and I did not need to support it, that growth or that spike and it presented itself beautifully. So this orchid needs a lot of calcium. I also do supplement with calcium nitrate on occasions. 
I did not do that for this orchid since her division because I wanted to maintain the root system and start with a new root system. And now with her next growth, I will supplement with calcium nitrate. I do believe that the next year's growth will be back to its original size. But once an orchid is divided, you're pretty much putting it into a reset and then you can't really expect the next growth to be the same size. And like I said, I did not even expect bloom. So this is amazing. But the next growth will always be slightly smaller because the entire orchid's back structure has been taken off. There's a lot of energy that is removed when you divide an orchid. There's no point putting in some kind of fertilizer like supplementing with calcium if the root system will not be able to absorb that for what the orchid actually has in the pot. So you can't go back time and say, well, I've taken 50% of the orchid off. Now I'm going to pump up with more fertilizer so that I get my growth back to size. The orchid itself, especially by foliates, are very, very conservative with their roots. The old root system could be dumped and you're pumping in more fertilizer. You're supplementing with more calcium, but on a dead root system. In my case, fortunately, it did not dump its roots, thank goodness. I was working with a growing root system after the orchid had bloomed. So pretty much in here, the current root system is the brand new root system from this growth from last year. And now I'm getting another brand new root system from this growth. And now with this new root system in place, when she starts her next new growth, the growth that will bloom in 2022, that is when I'm going to start supplementing with calcium again. And you can see perfectly fine how the 300 parts per million was adequate for producing blooms like this and getting the orchid to stand bolt upright. And she is not drooping. So fertilizer when in active growth, calcium supplementation when in active growth, when there is an established root system in the pot, and then flushing, 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 especially in inorganic media avoiding any kind of mineral deposits collecting on the surface. And I am proud to show you the surface of my LECA. There is no residue. Very, very happy about that. That gives me confidence that I've got this one dialed in with regards to how to fertilize it and to get it to bloom. I gave her a lot of light, summer as well as winter. Right now she is living in my blooming alley because she's in bloom. But in the summer, as from when the temperatures reach a minimum of 13 degrees Celsius, this orchid gets put outside on the east side of my patio, where she is behind a white curtain for about seven to eight hours of the day in full sun. Even on a cloudy day, it is still a lot of light. And on a cloudy day, like today, I would move the curtain aside. But if I were to leave her in full sun without any protection around her, these leaves would burn. Bifoliates love a lot of light, but they should never ever be in direct sunlight unless it's the milder morning sun or the fading afternoon sun. But they will burn despite the fact that they are considered highlight orchids for them to bloom. In the winter, she's on the top shelf of my rack in the dining room where there are LED lights right above her. So when she does start to grow her new growth about February, when the first ones come out, they are already going to be growing in a bolt upright position because the light source is from above. When I then move her to the east side, I always face the new incoming growth away from the light source so that the orchid will actually correct herself and grow upright because the light source in her case was coming from this side. So pretty much away from the light source to bring the growth in and correct itself in the pot. This is how I am able to maintain the size of the orchid on a shelf with several <clears throat> other big, big cattleyas, especially in the winter when space is a problem. So 13 degrees Celsius minimum, that is when she comes in. And then if I have sunny days, I do bring her out every day in the sunny days. And I have her then on my west side shelf where she can enjoy full sun, but it is a very weak sun, even here in southern Spain, where I'm at. So careful with the light levels. As long as the sun is weak, full sun, but when it gets stronger and even longer at day length, that is too much stress, even for a cattleya. In this case, a bifoliate. Knock on wood, I have never had any pest issues with this orchid. It's been 
so easy to grow for me. I've never had scale. I've never had thrips and any of the other nasties that we can consider. I haven't even got ants on her. <laughs> Considering 2021 was my ant year, no ants and no mealybugs. And I would like to keep it that way. Maybe I'm just lucky. And I am glad that in this case, I can say that I'm lucky. And that is also one of the reasons I say she's easy to care for. I don't have to be vigilant about her. And seeing that she's doing what she's doing for me this year, considering what she went through last year, well, I can only say, if you don't have a Zagarik wax, no matter what the cultivar name is, um, get one. It doesn't have to grow to full size to bloom. The proof is right before your eyes my eyes our eyes happy days love this love this love this if i didn't circle back around to a thought because i get distracted by seeing blooms in my viewfinder please please would you just bring that to my attention in the comments below and i will be very very happy to elaborate further if you have any doubts with regards to how much light you're giving your orchid or if you are thinking of transitioning into an inorganic media all these little factors. I have a playlist of everything semi-hydro as well, but if you happen to have a question that I can clarify really quickly in the comments, ask away. That's what these care collabs are for. And I want to say thank you again to Trisha's Orchids and Plant Life, Tropical Plants Finland, and Ed's Orchids for being so kind as to joining me on this care collab for Catlianthus Zagari Wax. In my case, African Beauty. I have all the links to their channels in the description below. Please go and check out how they grow theirs. Maybe inorganic growing is not what you prefer to be doing. So there's organic setups, different environments, greenhouse, all of that good stuff in the description below. And I'm sure that between all these videos, there may just be a nugget here and there and can consolidate and find the right way to grow this beautiful orchid. I know I have been very long-winded. I thank you for your time. And we're just gonna go close up once more to say, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Please stay safe, take care. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.